Hello and welcome to the Kick in the Creatives podcast, hosted by myself, Sandra Busby, and my fellow creative, Tara Roskell, offering you interviews, inspiration, motivation, and a gentle prod in the right direction. And for lots more information, challenges, and other useful tools to help you get creating, you can go to www.kickinthecreatives.com. And of course, this is where you can also find today's show notes. Enjoy the show. Welcome to today's episode and we are talking about art collaboration ideas. But before we get on to that, we want to say a big thank you to our latest Kofi supporters and they are Joanna Brown. Thanks so much, Joanna. Alicia Sedona. Thanks for doing this, she says. And also Patricia Coulter. It really does help us to keep this going. Yeah, we really do appreciate the support. Not only does it help us towards the cost of running Kick of the Creatives, it helps us keep us doing what we do, but also shows that you like what we do. So a big thank you for that. And also thank you to those of you who have been sharing your work with us on social media. Um, a few people have caught my eye. Lena Suomi, she's been doing some really quirky cartoons for the Quick Kick June using what I think looks like um, a brush pen, I think unless it's just a brush with ink but she's she's kind of making these little character well these kind of weird characters out of really simple shapes using i i think it's that one of those pentel um you know the japanese brush pens. oh yeah could, i could be wrong but it's what it i think that's what it is um and she's also been doing some copyist uh june drawings as well but she's been putting her own spin on it so she did one that was the girl with the pearl earring, but it was Miss Piggy, <laughs> or it was a piggy of some sort. And she's done quite a few pig ones, actually, including a, a Van Gogh self-portrait. So I do really love it when people put a sort of weird spin on something. So she's kind of doing the copyist thing, but she's she's making the face totally different, which is... Um, a bit of a cartoon really thrown in almost, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Well, it's yeah. almost like, well, yeah, she's kind of yeah. um, mingling the two together. Have you seen any of I those? I saw the pig one. I thought it was hilarious, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really really good timothy witt as well i've been enjoying his cartoons um he's been doing cats a lot of cats um he, he could have been do- doing something else but i've not spotted those ones but these cats have got quite a lot of attitude and, and personality about them so yeah i've been enjoying those ones and uh maya castanada or rather castaneda i think uh she's been doing the quick kicks challenge as well and they've got a bit of manga about them and they've been really good um and of course, lots more bums. You know how much I love bums. By Roving J. This time for Tonal June. Um, I never bore of uh, her bums. <laughs> In fact, she, she even drew mine recently. Did you see my bum? I did. <laughs> yes. She drew. Yes. Yeah, I, I was wearing clothes, by the way. <laughs> You'll be happy to know. Uh, yeah, so that was fun. What about you? What's caught your eye? Well, I just want to say that the people we're talking about now, if you're not in our Facebook group, that's where some of these images are that we're talking about. So if you want to join that, people just share the work they're doing, the challenges. Some are also on Instagram. But I saw Adrian Sutherland. She'd painted a desert landscape in purple for Tonal June. And it was just a really lovely painting, but it made me laugh because she says, don't laugh, but it started off as camels in the desert. There wasn't a camel to be seen. (laughs) Oh, well, that's... I quite like it when things like that happen. You you start something and it it evolves into something completely different than you initially imagined. And then I've also got 0N1B1. Uh, Mm -hmm. That's David Lemire on Instagram. And he'd done a fantastic face. And I just loved it because it's such an original style. So go check him out. And then also on Instagram... Auntie Emu, so that's Auntie underscore Emu, did a fantastic fashion sort of looking woman for Tonal June. But it was a sort of really quite quirky style. Love that. Really love that. But the it, fantastic, um, the fantastic challenge is so popular, isn't it? It is, yeah. It's I mean, so many people do it. It's unbelievable. It's getting quite tricky finding those pictures, trying to find something a bit different you now each week. So, yeah. yeah. Anyway, what is new with you? Uh, oh, okay. Well, I've got some quite nice stuff to share this time. So, um, first of all, I was invited as a guest on the Reb Chat podcast. Um, that is a podcast that interviews all sorts of creatives, so musicians, actors, painters. Um, so, if you want to take a listen to that, we can link to that in the show notes. What so is that's, it? That's Reb. Reb Chat. Yeah. R E B. 
Yeah. All right. Reb chat. Um, yeah, we'll link it in the show notes. Oh, rather, Tara, can you link it in the yeah. show notes, please? And uh, I suppose that's if you want to listen to a bit about my own kind of personal journey outside of kicking the creatives, then you might want to have a listen. Um, also, here's some exciting news. One of my paintings made the pre-selection for the SWA, which is the Society of Women Artists 2022 exhibition at the Mal Galleries in London. So, um, of course, that does not... I think you necess- shared that last time, so they won't be surprised. No, no, I didn't. I, have, <laughs> didn't I haven't you? shared... No, I haven't shared that. So just yet. for me that you told them. I probably just told you. All right. Yeah. <laughs> well, I could be wrong, but no, I'm pretty sure I haven't shared it on a podcast. Um, I did share it with you. Um, yeah. If I did, I apologise <laughs> if I'm repeating Have you myself. Have taken it down there yet? No, I've got to... T- there's a specific date you have to take it. Um, so, of course, it means I've got to go to London. Yeah. Uh, which is going to be, uh, it's going to be a re- really pushing it because we've got people coming over to the house that, that um, Saturday as well. It's on a Saturday and I've got to get to London and back, you know, really sort of by mid-afternoon if possible. And it's it's quite a way, you know, by the time you've found yeah. about on trains and everything. And oh, anyway, but anyway, I, I'm not worried about that. It's, I'm just really lucky to have been pre-selected. It doesn't necessarily mean that it will make the final selection. But but regardless of that, you know, even to make it over the first hurdle, it, I was so so shocked because I hardly ever enter my work into anything like that because, you know, I always assume it'll just be rejected. Terrible, isn't it? It's it terrible. Really yeah. I don't. I don't think I mean assume. I just. I just think. Ah, oh, no, oh, do you know? What? It's highly unlikely it's going to be accepted. So you know, it, you. I just don't get around to things like that. Um, so it goes to show that you you don't know unless you try. And I was allowed to um, enter up to six pieces. But I only entered one, um, and it, and it got through to the the pre selection. And what that actually means is they they see the initial piece as a digital, where you send them the digital, and then if it's pre selected, if they think, oh, that like you know, I like that, that's nice, you take it to London, and then it goes before a group of judges or the committee or whatever, and then they decide whether or not it makes the net, it makes the actual exhibition so yeah so but of course I had to get it framed because they want it framed and they do warn you that if for the frame um is not right for the painting it will compromise its chances of getting in so of course then we had to do a lot of thinking about the frame <laughs> uh yeah but anyway if it gets through then it will be hung in the um what they call the summer exhibition in in London so that would be amazing I mean I'll be able to say I'm in a London exhibition. Wow. <laughs> However, it's highly unlikely, like I oh, said. Oh, don't you, you never, no. Be you positive. never, yeah, you never know. Yeah. yeah. So uh, beat that one, Tara. What's new with you? <laughs> so I was trying to struggle to think what is actually new with me. And I don't well, think there so is... I'm going to take a lot of beating, let's face yes. it, today. Yes, I can't beat that. So I'm going to say now I can't beat it. Except... <laughs> I have been selected for something online <laughs> Cool. Oh. there's some, um, I don't know if I'm definitely in or whether I'm shortlisted, I can't, I'm not quite sure, but there's this Sabbath, there's a, a guy called Ali Sabbath who's big, uh, quite a big artist, but for this, there's this exhibition going on for NFT New York, so in New York, there's, yeah. I think it's, I don't know if it's a week or a few days, but there's loads of big art exhibitions all to do with NFTs. Um, yeah. He's having some sort of online exhibition, but I think they're probably, I don't know if they're shown in bars or whatever as well. So um, the, there's That's a, amazing. There's a woman online I'm connected with and she, she's allowed to put in, I think, about 50 people. So I think she's picked. <laughs> I've definitely been shortlisted by her. That's amazing. You could be like on a big screen in a New could York be. bar. Or you could be on one of the big, They've got really big buildings in New York, haven't they? Really tall. Maybe you'll be like in lights. <laughs> not me. <laughs> no, not you, but maybe your NFTs will be like. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I've just I'm I'm dreaming big for you here, Tara. Yeah, thank you. So I'm not <laughs> I'm not quite sure what it means because they have this really hideous 
in NFT world, they all use this hideous um, notice board thing called Discord. I think you've heard of Discord, Oh, haven't God, you? yeah, I hate Discord. Oh, it's horrendous. It's, it's like going back to the uh, uh, very, early, <laughs> very early 90s slash late 80s. Yeah, awful. Yeah. Anyway, so I could barely tell if I've actually been selected or not, but I think I have, but I'm not sure if it's just a short list, like I say. But then I've also been asked by someone else. Um, I think there's some events going on around that exhibition so they're not the actual nft new york but obviously when something like that's going on places around it will have events because they know that people are interested in that thing in the area do you know what i mean yeah so oh, well i think i think you have well i don't know if it's beat well no i think you might have actually beaten my bit of news oh well no but i've, I've been invited <laughs> to be on a different one anyway to do with that wow but, that's amazing yeah that's so but cool we'll see if it happens or not well but, you put a lot of effort into your nfts and i think your nfts are great because not only do you just do still image like a lot of people you do a lot of um animated images time lapses bundles all these different things so anyone who does not know what we're talking about when it comes to nfts we have done an episode in the past but i don't know it's two or three episodes ago specifically talking about nfts so you might want to go yeah. back and and listen to that but yeah well done well that wasn't actually off. what i was going to tell you <laughs> I just thought of that. No, oh, my God, Sarah. What else? What else? Because <laughs> no, that wasn't really... I hadn't really thought about that, which is kind of bonkers, isn't it? But um, all I was going to say is I keep thinking about going big. I don't know if I've t- told you this before about drawing large. Yes, yes. Yeah, because you, you bought some uh, I did. boards, A1 boards, haven't you? I bought some A1 boards, and then I tried to put it on this little mini pop-up easel, table easel that I bought, and it's too small. <laughs> <laughs> so I knew it might be. Mm. I knew it really only it went. I thought, but I thought I might be able to manipulate it. Maybe if I bought a big board, I would. But I think it might be struggle to support it. Is so there any way you could sort of put it against the wall? I um, well, I could, but because I am so how I work is quite messy. Yeah, I don't really want to get all the stuff or charcoal and everything on the wall. Even you know what you need. Anyway. You, you need Kevin to build you a little studio at the end of the garden. We haven't really got get... a garden. <laughs> well, the driveway. <laughs> get rid of your car. Yeah, and say we, we where the car is. We we're having an art studio. <laughs> right. Oh well, this is going to be fun. It'll yeah. be fun to watch. When are you going to start your first one? Well, I don't know. I've got. But I've got. You know, I'm going away soon. Yeah. So when I come back, I need to order e- an easel. And that, right. I said to Kevin, he could help me put that together, lucky person. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, and then I'll start that when I'm yeah. back. So yeah. I think, yeah. Oh, cool. Oh, I know what I was supposed to ask you as well. You okay. stated, and I don't know if everybody knows this, because you stated this in our newsletter, the mine not gone out yet, that you felt like you needed to start being more creative and you were going to start doing some sketching. Yes. So what's happened? Well, yes. Yeah, so... Um, I had a bit of an argument with myself recently and it was about the time when I decided, right, I I love doing my realism, feel I need to just spread my wings a bit and just try some other things as well and just not get in, you know, that, you know, you can get in a rut with your art. I love it and it's still me, it's still what I do, but I feel that I haven't, I've neglected the other side of me, the experimental side a bit. Um, and usually that happens in a sketchbook, doesn't it? When you're experimenting. So I thought I need to, I need to get back into that, you know, um, discipline I had of, of drawing every single day. I used to draw every morning. I used to get up an hour early and draw every morning. Well, that kind of slipped after about three years of doing it, two or three years of doing it. Um, one thing I've never, ever done, Tara, and I know you do this, but I've never done it because... I suppose I find it quite distracting, Um, is sit, when we sit in the evening, Paul and I, and watch a bit of telly, I never draw because I find I can't draw and watch something at the same time. Um, And I just feel, I don't know, I just never have. So I have now, on our coffee table in front of the sofa, I have got my crayons. I say Ooh, crayons, crayons. Co- coloured pencils, oh. sorry. <laughs> and some pens and pencils and my sketchbook. And I've just been sitting with Paul every night for about an hour just drawing. Now, because I got out of the habit of sketching for a while, I'm just just re, you know, you know you have to get back into a habit. I'm concentrating on that for now. Yeah. And then, yeah, what I want to do is start drawing some things that, 
I'm more like, oh, wow, you know, that's different. I wouldn't normally draw like that. Do you know what I mean? So we'll see. So what have you, you've been drawing happens. things in front of you so far? No, I've just been drawing, to tell you the truth, I haven't been drawing th- things in front of me because it would be very boring uh, because my lounge is basically my lounge. I see it every day. <laughs> I yeah. find it very boring. So I've been drawing faces for now, just faces. Yeah. Um, but I want to, I might start drawing people on the TV maybe. My, it's quite hard, isn't it? Unless it's you, really hard, yeah. Unless, unless it's someone who's, you know, static for well, some you pause time. Them, yeah. And I don't really want to do that to Paul. <laughs> Sit there and say, <laughs> you now right, have just, to wait. If you just watch him, you know, fr- freeze for 20 minutes or whatever. No, so I'm. when I say creative, I think I mean I want to start trying some different uh, mediums in my sketchbook. And, you know, like you see things like Louis Rosignol, yeah. people like that. Just... Just like that. Just try out some stuff. Yeah. You know, just some yeah. stuff. Not worry about it. Not think, oh, it doesn't, you know, I, I've got a permission to play. Hatching. Yeah, exactly. So I think I, I'm going to start playing. Well, I know I'm going to start playing more. And, yeah. And I've been playing more, of course, because I did my bums, didn't I? Yes, you did. Yeah. Good. But I suppose today, really, we should be talking about experimenting with our art, shouldn't we? we should but, be, yeah. <laughs> well, no, no we're not, we're not talking about experimenting with our art. We're talking about collaboration. I know exactly. Oh, but it would have been. It would have been. been yeah. a good, it would have been a good lead up. Yeah, if we were talking about. We yeah. have done an episode yeah. on that before, though. <laughs> no, we're talking about art collaboration, which is basically like what we do, Tara, isn't it? In a way, um, to some degree, in a different way, but um, yeah. we collaborate, and we are going to give you some suggestions on different ways you could work with other artists and creatives. Um, I've got to say right at the start that that. Tara, you've got way more experience with collaborations than I do, haven't you? So I wouldn't say way more. I've done a few. Okay, well, Tara did most of the work for this episode. So, so you're blaming I, me if it's not good. Is that uh, <laughs> no, I'm giving you credit. <laughs> credit where credit's due. Um, collaborating can be really, really good fun. Uh, so, you know, if you want to try something, but you want to keep it really simple to test the water, you could do something like simply create a drawing or part of a drawing and then send it to the person you've chosen to collaborate with. Now, this is actually something you, you don't even need another artist to do it with. You could, you, you know, you could do it with your kids or your, your husband or whatever, or your wife. Um, that person then completes the drawing or adds their own element to it. Um, or better still, you could you know, like I say, just swap. Like, that's where that person comes in. So what happens? It reminds me of that game we used to play as as kids. Do you remember the, the game Hats, Tara? Did you ever play yeah, Hats? Yeah, that, that annoying game, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And what you do is you draw a hat at the top of the piece of the paper and then you fold it down. The other person can't then see it. And then they have to draw the head and they fold it down and hand it back to you. And you keep doing it until you've reached the feet. And then at the end, you open up the paper and reveal the weird character that you've created and um my sister and I used to do this a lot when we were kids and I always think I always remember being so excited to see how it turned out you know but this is uh, to take it to a um a more refined level if you found another artist to work alongside it could actually be really cool um you don't have to fold it down either do you you can just draw no of course not no absolutely yeah although that would be pretty fun um another cool idea would be to get together with a group of friends and do a sketchbook relay so what happens is you would sketch on the first page and then you then send the book to the next person and they then fill the next page and so on. So eventually the whole book would be one big collaboration. And we actually thought about doing this, didn't we, for kicking the creatives, but I guess the logistics might be a bit tricky because we're kind of all over the world, but it could be cool to do something like that. Although, you know, who gets to keep the final book? That's the question. (laughs) Well, I tried it, didn't I, years ago? Yeah, it it didn't go anywhere, did it? You never got it back. The funny thing was, no, I did this years ago. I sent out 10 sketchbooks and the idea was that when they all came back or Mm. when some of them come back, I'd try and auction them for charity somehow. I I hadn't, I don't know how I was going to do it. But anyway, um, it must be 10, I don't know if it's 10 years ago. It's a lot of years ago, six years ago or something, I sent these books out. I think it was well, only... I think it was less than that because we'd met. Some of you telling me you were doing it. Yeah, but I think it was already going, wasn't it, when we'd met? We met probably five years ago. 
Hmm. Yeah, maybe. I can't remember. So I think it might. Oh, I don't. Maybe it's less than, but it's it's at least. I'd say it's at least five. Yeah. Um, so anyway, sent these out, and they only had thirty pages in. They were little things. Um. And basically, you was we had a Facebook group, and you were supposed to find someone to send it to, or someone you knew, and then you draw a picture, send it on. Um. Basically, they all seemed to go missing. <laughs> the yeah. Facebook group, not everyone got, I was going, anybody got these? And nobody would say they got them. And I guess people had left the Facebook group and yeah. they probably ended up in people's so drawers somewhere or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and then, I didn't. I don't know if I told you this, about a month ago, someone messaged me and says, Tara, I have one of your sketchbooks. Oh, wow. Really? But I, but I don't know if it was full or not. She just says, I've got one of the sketchbooks. What do you want me to do with it? And I said, oh, can you give it to your, give it to a local charity or something and see if they can, you know, sell it or something? Because I say, I don't even know if it was full or she'd just done a page because I was thinking, I haven't got the Facebook group anymore. I haven't right. got anything. And I say, I don't even know if the pages were done. So okay, so basically what we're saying then is don't bother doing that because that's not worth doing. <laughs> no, I think, it, I think it is worth doing because I've yeah. heard, of, I think it'd be worth doing if you've got a group that you know the people or even if you were in part of a local art group so say there's like 20 of you in a local art group and um, that'd be yeah. perfect so you're all mm. local because the problem with mine was you'd got someone sending it from australia to canada That's the problem. It's everyone's so far away so just posting it could cost a lot of yeah. money couldn't it so yeah and I, i'm pretty sure some of the ones that i had they probably got lost in the post who, who knows what happened to them i just think you need to make sure it's people that you know, I'm going to just draw a big willy in the in the page yeah. and send it yeah. on. <laughs> don't, don't give it to Sandra, so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. But, yes, yeah, so other things you could do, you could, one of you could create something by hand or you could both create something by hand and then edit it together digitally. So say, say like, if you don't live near each other, you've got one Australian, one in Canada, you both draw something and you scan it in, Send one of you then comps it all together. So you might then airbrush away half of one and put it with half of the other. And that is something where you don't have to live near each other. So that you could well, do. Well, you did it recently, didn't you? Did with I? Anna. Yeah, that was, um, I'll talk about this more later, but that is where someone draws perhaps analog. So I, I did mine by hand. Yeah. And then I gave it, I scanned it in, gave it to Anna, and she then digitally drew on it. Mm. And the Anna we're talking about is the Anna we will have had in our previous episode, if you want to go listen to that, Anna Zubarev. So one thing I think would be quite fun is say you both got the same reference image. Like, say me and you like drawing faces, don't we? So say yeah. we both picked the same face reference image and then we yeah. both drew it, but we did it in our own style, so quirky style. And then you could put that together in Photoshop. And that might be quite interesting. Half of yours, half of mine. You wouldn't even have to do literal half down the middle. I could pick one of your eyes and do you know what I mean? Yeah. That yeah. could be quite good. Um, and we were actually talking about how we could do a collab, didn't we? Which would be part digital, part by hand. Yeah, yeah. So I could draw one of my faces, one of my weirdy faces. And mm. then maybe you could either draw a uh, paint, really detailed, an apple or paint a hand of the glass in it yeah and yeah. then we somehow comp that together digitally so my face with your hand or whatever or my bum yeah <laughs> your yeah. face and my ass <laughs> <laughs> my face not literally my face one of my faces kissing your ass <laughs> <laughs> now that would sell <laughs> i bet it would as well yeah yeah. I've been saying, haven't I, for ages, my, my art isn't working as an NFT. Maybe maybe I just need to get my bum out. <laughs> yeah, well, I say to you, I think you have. And you have got your bum out now, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, I have. So, yeah. Anyway, your thoughts on doing a collaboration <laughs> like that? <laughs> okay. Well, you know, as I said before, you, you pretty much did most of the work for this um, episode because it's not something I've, um, I've really done a lot of, but... You said that you could create a drawing at the same time with somebody else on an online digital drawing board. That was one of the bullet points. And I looked at that and I thought, huh, well, you know, I can't talk about that because I have no idea how or where you would start with that or what that even means, you know. So, um, well, you know how we go on to Google Docs, don't we? 
Yeah. Yeah. And we, I was thinking, you know, it just it just means you'd have the headache of having to teach me how to do it. Because I don't know, I didn't even know it was a thing you could do. No, I don't mean we'd necessarily do it. I was just more suggesting this for you know yeah. anyone who fancy trying it. But we yeah. we collaborate on Google Docs, and so you can see yes. when I'm highlighting things or deleting things yeah. or adding words, and we can both yeah. w- work like that. Well, basically, you can get these online i don't know what you call them like memo boards or drawing yeah. boards and multiple people can draw on the same board i've never heard of this yeah i, I can't actually remember the but basically if you just um search for online drawing board something like that mm. and i only found out about it really because i did this i did this event a while back where um, someone asked me to be part of their event and to show one of my quirky faces yeah and then as part of that event she had groups of people including me go into these different rooms and there might have been maybe six or seven of you in there and you were supposed to be drawing a person's face the problem was we couldn't actually see the person we were supposed to be drawing at the same time as we were in the room (laughs) but it was quite fun so we were just guessing you know what he looked like Um, right and it sounds like it would be terrible but I actually thought it looked really good at the end. So everybody was just ad-libbing. So, you know, I I started drawing a bit of a face and then someone started drawing on top of bits of it. And then someone else started adding some colour and some other bits around it. And it's like, oh, that's going to look terrible, but I'd have had it on the wall. Oh, really? Yeah. I was. Do you know, it's just given me another idea. Oh, yeah. Which has just come off the top of my head. Say... Say you and I yeah. were to go, or a group of people were to go on Zoom as like a draw and chat kind of thing. Yeah. What we could do, say we're, we're drawing a face or a person. Yeah. Yeah. And then we could take turns in, just in saying which bit we're going to concentrate on next. And maybe I could say, right, this man has a very bulbous, big nose. Oh, God. So Glad we all that. have to, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. Okay, so that means everyone's got to draw this nose. bulbous nose. Yeah. And someone else could say, okay, so this, this person has a very skinny, wrinkly neck or the massive ears or tiny ears or whatever. So you're collaborating in that way. You're just sort of, st- you've got this vision in your head of what this person's going to look like. Or better still, just one person has to describe um, a person to everyone else and they've each got to draw this person so maybe i could say right we're drawing a woman she's got a very long pointy nose she's got a very long pointy chin she's wearing a floppy hat she's it's me isn't it oh. you're talking about me <laughs> <laughs> um and just this explain to someone and to explain to a group of people the person who you've got in your head and everyone's basically drawing the same person that you're describing. And at the end, when you finished, everyone can hold up their piece of paper, and it, you could, and basically you can see what each of those drawings look like. That's, I like that. So yes, would you, I like that. That, would, that idea got better as I went on. Would you have a picture yourself? So this would be a real person, I take it. Well, I, we could do it that way. See, that's another idea. I like idea. that. I like the idea of having a picture of a real person. Yeah, and, and describing yeah, so them. so nobody can see it but you, because it would be really interesting then to compare it to the... Yeah, wouldn't it? Yeah. Oh, we should try that. <laughs> yeah. But we could do it with a group of people. Yeah, that would be quite fun. And do it where it's kind of like... Do you know yeah. what? We could, we could do We could keep talking about doing an Instagram Live. Now, mm. maybe we could do that as an Instagram Live, and one of us is the person... Who talks and yeah. says... And, and we swap, we do two, so and we switch. Yeah. Oh, that's I like that idea. Yeah. Everyone else will say that's rubbish. Don't do it. That's rubbish. I think it's brilliant. Oh, uh, yeah. It's only because you thought of it. <laughs> we need to. We need to keep that in our heads, Tara, because yeah. I like that idea. Okay. Um. Okay. Wow. Well, because that's just come from what you said. Yeah. Well, to be this, this picture though, I literally I could have taken that, printed it out on a big canvas, and I'd have had that on my wall. It was so good. Yeah. Just yeah. It was so random because, I mean, that would be, I remember hearing about these people that would actually get together at a studio, they're like events, mm. and the people would actually all paint on the same canvas. Yeah. Take it in turn. So not literally at the same time. One yeah. bit person would do something. And I thought that would be quite cool. 
Yeah. You would hate doing that on me because I'd be <laughs> way too messy. <laughs> Do you know what I'd love? What? To be the one who just... Well, no, I'd like to be the person who draws it, but I'd also love describing things. Because I think I'd be really good at describing something in well, detail. Well, you're just saying this now because you want to be the one that does that and doesn't have to do the stupid drawing, aren't no, you? No, no, I think I'd enjoy both. Oh, okay. I'd enjoy both, but I think I'd be quite good at describing things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, right. that, that sounds cool. Anyway, you've got anything else to yes. say before I go? Um, the other thing... I was going to say is the way I work with Anna, like we were saying before, is for one person to do a drawing, um, either you draw that analog analogly, I don't know if that's a word, <laughs> you draw it by hand or you draw it digitally and then the yeah. other person works over the top of that digitally. But of course yeah. that only works if one of you works digital at least. Yeah. And that's the, yeah. and that, the great thing about that is that you don't have to be local. You can be absolutely anywhere. Like cause yeah. Anna lives in America and I live in the UK. Yeah. Um, another thing you can do, and we did this, uh, is to create each other an art box. You know how you oh, get, yeah. you know how yeah, you get did. all these art boxes online, don't you? Where you like, you can subscribe, and they send you all these goods. But you send each other. You decide on an amount you're going to spend, and you can even do this if you're abroad. Um, so, for example, say you decide, okay, I'm going to spend ten pound on whatever the equivalent of that is in dollars. And yeah. then you send each of those materials, but you could just do it by sending it directly from Amazon to the other person. Yeah. If you didn't, then, yeah, because then you don't pay all the postage fees and stuff. Um, but basically, so you send them a load of stuff, and then they have to make something from what you send them. You could even give each person a project. So basically, you send each other a little project and art materials to make. And you hated what I sent you. I hated what you sent me. <laughs> <laughs> we, I did love the box it came in. You'd created this amazing little box and you'd put all the, the Kick and the Creatives logo on it. It was all very poshed up. And we, I think our limit was a fiver, wasn't it? Yeah. We managed so to get stuff pounds. in the sale, didn't we, I think, both of us. Yeah. But yeah. I, I mean, I got an entire set of gouache, which I absolutely hated. <laughs> <laughs> and crayons, wax crayons. And crayons, equally as disturbing that you'd send me something <laughs> like that. Yeah. And I can't remember what I sent you. Um, you sent me these horrid paints that you did use for pouring to make. Oh, yeah. The most disgusting, horrible things ever that I hate. They're like smelly. They get oh, everywhere. Oh, wow. Yeah. But you're the person that always says you should have always try something more than once. So, no, I'd never do those again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think, see, now I think you might. Yeah, no, I might I'm, try them again and uh, like them. No. You never know. Although I did quite like the result of what I did with it in the very end, because um, mm. do you remember I it made this sort of bluey pattern, and then I did that cutout. You probably can't remember. I cut I out can't. a white silhouette and put it over the top of it of a woman with these sunglasses on it, so you could see the blue through it. That looked oh, quite nice. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. it was good. I do remember now. But that was quite fun. That was a really fun thing. We did it actually for one of our YouTube videos. Yeah, we did. But that was cool. I think that's that's quite a fun thing. You could even do it yeah. with a group of you, couldn't you? And just yeah. decide who sends to who. Yeah. But yeah. Or I guess you could all decide between you what materials you're going to... You could pick out of a hat what materials you're going to buy. Yeah. And then you all use the same. That's another way to do it. Yeah. Sounds good. <laughs> Funny enough, okay. this, this is totally different from that, but I was talking to Kevin who doesn't like art at all i say he doesn't like art he likes my art and he likes other people's <laughs> art but he doesn't like doing art no no he's not yeah but i was talking like to him Paul. i was showing him some abstracts and stuff and i said what about would you ever try an abstract and he said do you know he says i'd give that a go because i guess there's no pressure he, he knows that it doesn't have to be anything exactly so. yeah so he said i said oh i forgot some paints then Maybe uh, I have actually already got paints. Oh, I'll give him that pouring paint that I gave you. No, <laughs> I don't even you ever do it, but it's interesting that someone would be prepared to do that because the pressure isn't there for it to look like yeah, something. Yeah, that's very interesting. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, okay, so on our Facebook group, we organise something called a postcard swap at the beginning of every, every month, don't we? Yes, yeah, so, the middle. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, yeah, by, by the time you remember to post yeah. it. Um, so anyone who wants to do that, they put their name down on the comment thread and then we rela we randomly select pairs. Or rather, you do, Tara. I, I do, don't, don't yeah. Um, and then those two people have to then create a postcard and send it to the other person by the end of the month. So it's not strictly a collab, but it is a really nice way 
of sharing art and how nice to receive something in the post that's not a bill or a piece of junk mail, a little piece of art, a little gem. I like that. I like that. So, and people seem to love doing that, don't they? Yeah, I mean, it wouldn't even have to be a postcard. You could do bigger stuff if you wanted, couldn't you? It's mm. just, um, we do yeah. that because it's nice and it's relatively cheap then if you've got to send it abroad. Great way of sharing and, and making new friends and contacting people and actually bringing back posts that it's a bit more interesting, you know? So, yeah, that's another thing. Yeah, I mean, I thought a quite nice idea would be if you were, especially if you're having an event or something, a little local event, if a load of different artists come together and create a postcard each, you've got them printed, and then you put them in a little pack, that would be quite nice as well. Yeah. Just like as a little giveaway. You know how you and Carrie, Kerry had your art exhibition? Yeah. If you'd created something little, it got like six postcards, three each or something, that could be quite nice. Mm, mm. Um, you can also collaborate by setting each other challenges. And this, to be honest, is how we got started, really, isn't it? Yeah. Way yeah, back five years many, ago, maybe? Many years ago. Yeah. yeah. So just it's just fun because if you've got someone else doing it rather than just you, it just makes it a bit, a bit more fun. So, well, way more bef- way um, before we created kick in the creators you know we we were doing fun challenges together weren't we yeah and you could either just decide something fun to do or say you both want to get better at watercolor or something Mm. you can define your own limits of what you're going to do so you might say okay every week we're going to create two paintings of of dogs in watercolor um yeah it's just nice because then you've got someone you can share it with and keep each other going and stuff haven't you Mm. You could do the same organised challenge with a friend. So um, that way you can kind of cheer each other on and compare notes again. Um, Good way of being accountable, I suppose. So I guess it could be one of our challenges. We do so many every month. Well, we do three every month. Um, Or it could be an outside one. Might might be you want to do the Inktober and you've got a friend who wants to do the same. You know, if you're doing the same one, it's quite a cool way of comparing notes, I guess. Um, so you could do a joint exhibition or event. That's another way of collaborating. And I did a joint exhibition a couple of years ago, as you said, Tara, with my friend Kerry, um, and she's also an artist. And it really does make it less nerve wracking because, you know, you've got each other there for moral support. And also you've got someone else to help with all the organizing, which can be a bit of a headache on your own. So that's that's quite nice. I mean, I remember being terrified of, of having an, an, an exhibition. But obviously, if you're both in it together, you can you don't feel like such a rabbit in the headlights. So that's worth considering, I think. Yeah, I would hate to do an exhibition on my own. I just yeah. I just would not enjoy it. But mm. if like if you're someone local or if you did one, you know, if we did one, it'd yeah. oh, it'd just be so much easier. Yeah. 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 Because you can just both hide in the corner together then. It's <laughs> like in our thumbs <laughs> yeah. in the fetal position. Yeah. yeah. That would make an inter- interesting exhibition with your work alongside mine. They'd be going, these people have got totally different personalities. Oh god, <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine? <laughs> Yeah, who's the sarcastic one? Who's the one who doesn't stop talking? <laughs> Both would be you, wouldn't it? Hey! <laughs> <laughs> so I've actually been organising a collaboration event at the moment in the NFT space, in a di- basically in the digital art space. And um, I decided, to, I, it's really funny because I don't know about you, but sometimes you have these ideas and usually what yeah. I do is talk myself out of it. Yeah. Do you do that? So you think, oh, I know, a great idea would be to have a big collaboration event. And then you think, oh, no, it's going to be a nightmare talk. Guys. Oh, no, no. So this time, instead of talking myself out of it, I immediately messaged a load of people saying, what do you think to this? Um, and then, so I basically I brought together 30 different artists uh, to do 30 collaborations and reveal them over 30 days. Yeah. In June. But I have to say, it was really quite stressful. Uh, I was going to say, this is another one where you're say, we're saying, yeah, this is this is an idea. But I know that it has been a bit of a headache, hasn't it? Yeah, I've actually decided now that uh, you're never going to do it again. No, no, <laughs> no, I haven't decided I won't do it again. It won't be for quite a long time. But <laughs> people have actually said to me, "Well, can I be in the next one when you do it?" Oh wow, really? Um, but I I just decided that what will be what will be. I yeah. can't, I've, I was trying so much to control it 
Because if you can yeah. imagine, I've got 30 people and the majority of them doing two collaborations. Some are doing three, mm. some are doing one. But having to then reach out to each of these people separately, because in a group message, I don't always get it. So yeah. you're having to message all these people saying, are you all okay? Are you, you know, is everything going to plan? Yeah. And it's just, it's quite an undertaking, really. But I've mm. just decided if they don't, if someone doesn't do it, I can't do anything about it. It's out of my control now. Yeah. And also, yeah. then you're trying to publicise the event. And I spent about a day trying to collate a load of addresses that I could send details of the event to. Yeah. But it was not very fruitful. So... Mm. I got, I got back a load. Oh, yes, we do advertising. It's $2,000. <laughs> <I'm>, what? <laughs> I haven't got $2,000. Um, and then there was some that like, oh, you know, we don't advertise NFT events or or mm. the minimum. You can get places where you do free press releases to advertise an event, but uh, some of them wouldn't do it because it's an NFT event or you can do it minimum, but you've got to pay $60. So, yeah. you know, yeah. so, so it is a lot of work, but but it, it can be kind of, it can be an interesting thing as well. I mean, it's been quite interesting seeing the ones so far. So, And that is basically just two artists coming together. And there's either, generally, there's one who does traditional art and then scans it. And then the other person yeah. works over the top. Mm. Or you'll get two digital artists. So they're both working digitally and one work over the top of the other. Yeah. Um, you could also collaborate on teaching art. So imagine if there's something that you really like to do and you're quite good at. And maybe you, you find the idea of teaching a little bit daunting, then maybe you get together with a friend and teach it. And you could either do that locally or you could do that online. I mean, that's something we're trying, isn't it? Well, actually, yeah, we're, we're almost finished. Almost, um, yeah. Almost finished. We've created a course, um, Tara and I, and we are, well, it's, it's up it's not out yet because we've got to um, add things like the text and just make sure it's all laid out properly. But soon it's coming, it's coming. So uh, we'll, as soon as it's out there, we'll let you know. But again, a collaboration and it's basically, you know, an online course, which we're, we're teaching together. So, And the interesting thing about that is it brings together two perspectives of things because yes. so the way you and I work is very different. And yeah. so whereas normally you do a course and there perhaps be one person, or this, yeah. you've got two two different ideas and ways of doing it, and hopefully, yeah. one of those, at least one of those ideas, might suit you. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, as we know, art comes in a lot of different forms. It doesn't have to be all about visual art. You can collaborate on a piece of music, a poem, or even a story, like Tara and I did. Which <laughs> part of the collaboration was I illustrated it, but mainly because you didn't want to, and I still haven't done that yet. <laughs> <laughs> but we did create a, an amazing little a children's story, which I really enjoy. Um, I didn't. You didn't like writing it. No. I loved it. I didn't after about four weeks. No. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it's a good. It's a good story. It's a good book. So um, it you know it it really works. But again, that's the two of us are creating one story, which, which is pretty cool, really. Um, or maybe, in fact, we've got someone in our group doing this. Russell, oh, I, sorry, Russell, I can't remember if you do um, if you do listen to this. I can't remember your surname, <laughs> but he's been illustrating a book that his wife is writing. Um, he's the one that's been doing the snails. I don't know what this book's going to be about, but little, I don't know, loads of loads of them. Anyway, so. Um, just don't ask me to illustrate your book because you'll be waiting three years later <laughs> for it to be done. But again, another collaboration. Like I say, it doesn't have to be all about art. It could be anything. Yeah, I mean, I've recently seen uh, online in the digital world again, artists collaborating with musicians, which is, ah, is quite cool. That's so amazing. Yeah. You know, they might just have like a... Uh, an artist created an image that they maybe just put a little bit of animation in. And that doesn't yeah. even have to be a really clever animation. It could be, you know how you use that app to do a little bit of animation? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then a musician, like, say, a guitarist. There was one guitarist and he's done a bit of classical guitar over the top. But it oh, just, how cool. But yeah, it just kind of adds something. And I think yeah. someone else was doing poetry over the top of imagery. <sighs> maybe um, we could collaborate you could do um one of your time lapse that you do yeah and i could i could sing over the top oh that would be beautiful in my delightful voice i, I could screech <laughs> I, could put, I could put it on as a reel couldn't i with yeah, instead of you, choosing and you can listen to me over and over again as you watch tara 
like do her thing over and over again. And instead of choosing on the nice soundtracks, I could have you, couldn't I? You could. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, anyway one final thing and this is an important thing to consider in fact it's really important if you're thinking of embarking on a serious collaboration i mean i'm not talking about you know some of the things like you're going to swap drawings and each do a bit because that's that's relatively short lived and you know that's fine but if you're thinking of embarking on um a podcast with someone uh, else on something (laughs) yeah something that you know is going to require both of you to be pretty invested then make sure that you are confident that you're a good match because you know you've got to both be reliable you've got to both be on the same page and and have the same goals at least or you know if you if you don't you might find that you'll either let the other person down or let they'll let you down and it's it's just not going to work and you don't you don't want to be falling out with anyone do you I mean we knew each other for quite a while didn't we really you know before we started this up and we were very much on the same page and we tested it didn't we because I had a podcast at the time and you'd co-hosted some of mine so we knew it worked yeah and also you know you know if you ask me to do something by a certain date it will be done or if you ask me to, to, oh, can you quickly do this? It will be done and vice versa. It's, it, we, we're reliable because yeah. we know that we need each other to be reliable and it works. But you have, you know, just if it's anything that's going to be quite an investment of time, just make sure you're, you're a good match with that person because, you, you know, it could go horribly wrong otherwise. It, it, might, it, it might not have worked at the end of the day. I know you've tried collaborations in the past and you've found it's not... Yeah really worked um, uh, i think i think a good way of doing it is what we did to test small things yeah. first like yeah. we we yeah. started off messing about with little challenges and co-hosting a few episodes didn't we yeah in the podcast yeah and so you learn then oh this does work mm. so i think that's a good way of doing it start small yeah. and then build it up exactly exactly anyway shall i read out the previous question yes and that was how does your art reflect your personality and as, of course, I've given you all the long ones. So I, I, I will kick it off <laughs> with Nina Meyer. It shows potential, but it's too uptight. Clings to legend rules too much. You always wonder how awesome it could become if it finally broke free. Oh, yeah, I know that feeling. I do. Katie Lennon. I'm a dreamer. I feel like I've wanted to break free and explore myself through art all my life. For a long time, I was always dependent on what others thought of me and what constitutes as real art. I feel now that my art shows my journey and growth and desire to see and explore more. I may not have found my style yet, but I won't give up trying. Okay, and I've got Kim Hine. I don't have a style, but this year through monthly challenges and other classes, I feel like I've loosened up a lot. This month's non-dominant hand drawing has been an aha moment because it made me loosen up. I've had the best month, best fun this month making my family album with people and flowers all done in my non-dominant hand. It's been a long time since I've enjoyed my art. Oh, that's great, isn't it? It really is. Actually, I used my left hand um, <laughs> to do some <laughs> to do my some of my bum painting. You do say some weird things. <laughs> No, my left hand, I, I used to do some of the real squeak, squeak, well, if you can call them scribbly lines, I stood an arm's length away from my bum yeah. on my canvas and I used stick of charcoal and I just used my left hand so Ooh. that they went all, all perfectly straight. Yes. So. You should have just tried sticking me. it on um, garden canes, you know, like I told you that woman did. <laughs> yeah, I've actually, I thought of that. Yeah. I did think of that. I've got to say, when I first told, told Tara... I was going to do, um, I was thinking of doing... Abstract, you told me. Um, I, well, no, I said, I'm gonna, I want to do something that's going to incorporate realism with something that's definitely not realism. And, and, and then at some point I said, I, I'm actually drawing a bum at the moment. And you said, what have you done? Have you stuck a marble in it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I know you like drawing marbles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that did, did make me laugh. Anyway, sorry, getting distracted. Uh, Adrian Sutherland, organised but random. I've got Elsie Gray, colourful, sometimes uptight and awkward, and other times joyful, most often a bit of a mess. Uh, Margaret Gray, I'm an underachiever. I bet you're not, Margaret. Um, I feel my art just needs to jump off, but then I get blocked. 
Now, Margaret does the most amazing ink drawings, so she's oh, really wow. selling herself short there. Oh, she really is. Now, Ma- yeah, Margaret does those, um, like, faces, and she does, like, about six on, on a page. Oh, my gosh. Incredible. I love I mean, they are something else. I think she's amazing. I really, really do. I, I so think Margaret, the only thing she hasn't got, she hasn't got the recognition. That's all it is. It's not enough people have seen her work yet. Yeah, she, she's... It's not that it's Margaret, not great. you are incredibly talented, and don't you forget it. No. <laughs> yeah, you've been told. Yeah, yeah. And anyway, Joe Brown, enthusiastic but lacks focus. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> yeah, I'm a bit like that as well. Uh, Imaginings by Karen. I feel all art I create reflects a bit of me in it. I created it. I have heard people tell me that my pieces are fun, joyful, and bring humour to the viewer. That's the best reflection I can think of. Oh, yeah. I've got Catherine C. Slater. Good at starting lots of things, but not so good at finishing. Dare Stevens. My art is bright and colourful, sometimes whimsical and hopefully tells an engaging story. I've got Elise Esquivel. Messy and constantly evolving. <laughs> Rick Fravor, I love this question. My landscapes are peaceful and serene and I tend to be a laid-back, down-to-earth guy. <laughs> I've got Andy W. Art, dark and detailed, plus I like to hide things in there. I guess I'm not showing myself in a good light with this question. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Sue Watson, impulsive and emotional, but also disciplined and restrained, I think. I've got Michael Beckett. The deeper I go into this art journey, the more aware I am of wanting to reflect my personality. Often to the extent that I'm too picky about what I do. I guess first, I like to create quirky humour in my pieces. When it comes to more traditional art, I like strong light and realism, with enough looseness to make the viewer do a double take. If I can include one or two of those attributes in a piece, I'm happy. Okay, Rob Myers. I never felt my art suited my personality, although I enjoy what I create, which is dark, weird and wonderful. But I found it never matched my personality or what I'm feeling at the time. I just drew intuitively and worked on what emerges. I read up on this as I did start to question my mental health. Yeah, I was thought out about your work, actually. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Why is everything so dark? Often mel- I can't say melancholic, this melancholic, weird and wacky. Uh, as I've had no major traumas in life, and I've lived pretty much a healthy lifestyle, but I did question it. Is it a reflection of my subconscious trying to get out? Hmm. I read something somewhere that says, "Do not worry if your art is a creation of things you don't understand. It's just your subconscious at play," which is a sigh of a relief. Uh, no men in white coats coming for me just yet. Which also takes me back to what Sandra Busby, that's me by the way, uh, said in a podcast (laughs) about there are two sides to her art, which I can relate to. As when I draw, I become a different person to who I am in real life. Very interesting indeed. And it would be great to hear from an art therapist who could deep uh, dig deeper into this now tara how many times have we said well, i'd love to get an art therapist on yes this we podcast. have yes. i really I don't want them would. to analyze me but yes <laughs> that could be a, could take a long yeah. time that would take a whole episode in itself but yeah wouldn't that be great yeah. so if you're if you're an art therapist and you can talk a lot not um, too much because sandra much. likes to talk a lot as well <laughs> <laughs> then yeah we'd like to hear from you uh yeah anyway yeah i've yes. got hillary milner i hope that people can see through my abstract cartoon colorful images that i love humor color and i try not to take myself and life too seriously i can also take a different slant to the daily prompts although i can sometimes show a more somber side when the muse takes me Okay, so we have a brand new question for you, which is, if you could feature in a famous painting, which would it be and why? So if you could feature in a famous painting, which would it be and why? So Tara... I knew this was coming. I've decided it'd be the Mona Lisa, but what I would like to do is, if it's literally like an animated me, I'd like to pull faces. So... (laughs) (laughs) So if she's supposed to have this enigmatic smile, then I'd like when the person turns around for her to stick a tongue out. 
Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, as, as they turn away. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, she does look quite miserable, I think. She does, Lisa. yeah. I don't mm. think she's very achromatic. Right, I have you. to say, it's not my favourite painting, the Mona Lisa at all. I no, don't, me neither. I just don't, no, I don't, I don't like it, really. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> okay, yes. Well, I have an answer. Are you prepared? Well, do you know what? I would, I would love to be featured in a painting by the Connor Brothers. So I know you hadn't heard of the Connor Bunner Brothers, and I've mentioned them before. And they do a lot of paintings with featuring women, or, or men, but a lot of women uh, with these really sort of fun quotes. Um, and these women have got so much attitude. It, they are quite comical, some of them. And he's, it's a bit like pop art kind of style. And do you know what I really hate about a lot of paintings um, by the old masters? Don't get me wrong, they're masterful and beautiful paintings. But it it just I just it really gets on my nerves that the women that they they are made to seem so kind of fragile and vulnerable and you know women are far sturdier than that aren't they and and I just love that the Connor brothers totally um, have nailed that that women have some attitude about them and they're not these sort of um, you know wallflowers if you like so have a look at some of the paintings you'll know what i mean okay but, but that's that's my answer yeah so yeah. as always you can tweet us your answers at kick creatives or let us know in the facebook group which if you haven't already joined i suggest you do and you can share all your art there we will put the question up there and also on the facebook page and of course on our instagram which is kick in the creatives yeah, we hope that gave you the kick in the creatives you needed. And don't forget to pop over to our website at kickinthecreatives.com to find out how you can take part in some of our upcoming creative challenges. And of course, there you can also subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode. And if you're enjoying the podcast, we'd be really grateful if you'd leave us a little review on iTunes or even just a star rating if you don't have much time. We don't. We absolutely adore getting reviews, don't we, Tom? We, we always read them yeah. out. We, we always do with read some them more. Out. Yes, uh, please. <laughs> uh, and also, don't forget to sign up for our newsletter. If you go over to our website, there's a newsletter sign up there. And then I think twice a month we'll send you, well, halfway through the month, we'll send you little inspirational things about the challenges to try and give you some ideas. Yeah, little and, videos and things. Yeah. yeah and then at the, near, the, near the end of the month, we'll tell you what we've got coming up and the, post, uh, the podcasts that we've had, etc. So keep you up to yeah. date with everything. And it's not spammy at all. No. It really isn't. It's well worth signing up for if you like to take part in challenges. Um, and if you enjoy what we do and you'd like to help support us here at Kick in the Creatives, you can do so by buying us a coffee. And you can find the Kofi link on our website. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's it for this week. And we'll see you soon. See ya. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for listening. We hope you enjoyed the episode. And if you did, perhaps you'd like to share it and leave a review for us on iTunes. Back soon. The same in you, Sandra. We both found a face reference. Yeah. And we both decided, okay, you can take oh, no. this. What? What? My microphone hasn't been on. Well, I can hear you, so it must be. Oh, oh that's weird. Hang on. Oh, it is on. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Tara, it is on. But it wasn't. It like it. The icon wasn't on. You know, the bottom of the pe- the screen, you have like blobs and squares. Yeah. Well, they've normally got a dot underneath, haven't they, to say that they're active? Well, I don't, mine hasn't because I use a different program to you. Okay. I hope the, it sounds all right to me. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. What were you saying? Um... <laughs>